Welcome to the Korean Resource Center. I am Yuri Kandilado, President of the Nations Policy and Planning Council. NAPCON is a coalition of over 35 organizations, including health and human service providers, civil rights and policy advocacy groups, and community based organizations that advocate on the obligations of Pacific Islanders in Los Angeles since 1976. Having a moment, we'll be introduced to a dynamic group of community leaders elected officials and consumers, urging our stakeholders to vote no on the harmful ballot measures in the November 8th special <coughs> These ballot measures make drastic changes to health care, education, and important social services that can harm immigrant communities. Although APCON is designed to educate API voters on how the ballot measures will specifically reflect, or rather, rather affect them, and what issues are at stake in their communities. In addition, I will search to involve Filipino Americans in the historic Filipino Town District. The forum is co-sponsored by numerous organizations, including the Asian Pacific American Legal Center, the Asian Pacific Islanders California Action Network, 74 to 76. And now to speak on our first proposition on Prop 74, which directly affects our school system and public school teachers. Please welcome the board, from the Board of Trustees of the Los Angeles Community College District, and a consultant to the Speaker of the California Assembly, the Honorable Warren Furatani. Good afternoon. Four, which we emphatically say no to. Candidly, it's a part of an effort that has been in, underway for quite a while in the world of education, where a punitive approach to education seems to be how people think we're going to fix things. If you look at another example, which is testing, that we have in our school districts, people get tested, which I think is important, but the way they test these days is totally wrong-headed. For example, you test in May, the results come out in June, the students, if you tested, have already left that grade level, so it doesn't help their education one bit. But it is used to punish schools if they don't come up to the standards that they're supposed to, and as a result of that, they can lose funding and any number, any number of other kinds of punishments. I think it's a have a ten-year period of five years. The rest have much shorter times relative to tenure to become a permanent teacher. The effort to try to improve teachers, the effort to get rid of bad teachers, is something to request for people to send in stories about bad teachers they've had. This is the kind of attitude and anti-teacher approach they're taking to this issue. As we're five, Governor Schwarzenegger has already said that he wants to bring the pension issue back onto the ballot for next year in an attempt to quiet those who would fight against it is the first for Prop 75. For Prop 74, I think there's also an ulterior motive. If you look at the people that advise Governor Schwarzenegger, they come from the Pete Wilson administration. During the Pete Wilson administration, we had the voucher initiative where they tried to privatize public education. I think that's what they're trying to do as well. They're trying to attack the teachers, trying to attack the teachers' union. They're trying to demonize them so then they can put next year a voucher initiative on the ballot to privatize public education. We've got to stop them here. We've got to stop them now. No on Prop 74. Thank you very much. To speak on proposition. We're trying to help workers, but it's not doing that. It's just another one of, like Warren said, a stalking horse. They're trying to attack teachers. When the governor campaigned on education and how education was first, and he wasn't going to cut education, one of the first things he did was cut education. And when the teachers called him on that, called us all together finally, when our unions, our te the teachers through our unions, called them on that. Then we had some sort of negotiations and made a deal and said, okay, we'll, we'll take some cuts this year as long as you put the money back as you're required by law. And then again, this, and then the following year when they tried to again, he tried to go back on his promises and cut it. The teachers again, through their union, through my union, I'm a, I'm a teacher and it's my union, we tried to call them on it. Um, we, we stopped them again. So 
they're trying to, to get the teachers to be quiet. And the same thing with nurses. When the nurses, I actually, my mom's a nurse, and when the nurses finally got through a bill through the, the legislature that limits the number of patients that these big corporations can force nurses to take, you know, his big friends, the big corporations, when we finally get that bill passed, now the, you know, and then the governor then tries to go through the back door and stop that bill from taking effect. Um, the nurses called him on it. The nurses were out there. Everywhere he went, the nurses were out there. And it's their union that helped organize the nurses to do that. Same thing with the firefighters and the police. When he tried to balance the budget by taking away survivor benefits, <coughs> meaning if a firefighter or a policeman dies on the job, their, sur their, their survivors, their family get some money from the state. Just trying to take that out. When he tried to balance the budget again on people called government employees, well, they're your firefighters and your policemen, your nurses and your teachers. We get out there through our unions, we get out there to try and stop them. And they said, you know, if the big bad unions were spending all this money, there are absolutely limits already in place. And it's my union too, we vote them in. It's a democratic system. The people who run my union, we voted for them in a democratic way. And in any democrat democracy, you're going to have a few people. Of course, there are teachers who may not like it. But it's the vast majority who voted them in who agree, and we don't want them to cut. And Warren was saying, he's promised he's going to be going after a pension. And you know, before I became a teacher, I didn't even know this. I don't know if you know, but teachers in California don't get Social Security. So the pensions that we get that he's promised to go after, that's the only thing we have. So when I retire, he's going after our pensions. That's it. I don't have Social Security going after my future. And we're going to talk again about the shortage that's going, the teacher shortage. The teacher shortage is going to get worse because a lot of the people who came in are going to be retiring in the next few years. How are you going to recruit good teachers if, one, you make it harder for new ones to come in by increasing the with Prop 74, and then you take away their pensions so there's you know, no future in being a teacher. You don't have pensions, you don't have Social Security. Why would you want to be a teacher? So, you know, again, I see that he's trying to balance the budget on the backs of all the working people by, by sort of saying it's all our unions, big bad unions. But we just say no, absolutely not. It's my union, and it's the voice of working people, of real people that are out there in our community. And we're the only people that have been out there against the, we're being outspent by the big corporations, the people who are his friends, 24 to 1. They spend it 24 times more than our unions do. So it's already a small enough voice. He's trying to shut that voice down completely. So vote no on 75 for, for education, health care, your police and fire, all your good public employees. Thank you. And the community. The first Schwarzenegger bullet is aimed at teachers. Prop 74, the Blame the Teachers Act. And I say, vote no. The second Schwarzenegger bullet is aimed right at workers. Proposition 75, the Paycheck Deception Act. And I say, vote no. <coughs> and now let me talk about the third Schwarzenegger bullet because it's aimed right at our community. Proposition 76, the School Funding Reduction Act, and I say, vote no. This, in fact, is the worst measure of all. It would make the programs that are most vital to the Asian Pacific Islander community, education and health care, more vulnerable <coughs> than ever to cuts by this governor. Now, this governor is saying that it will control state spending, but it, what, what it really does is give him the power of an emperor to make cuts wherever he sees fit without any checks or balances, and worst yet, it actually overturns Proposition 98, which all of you voters voted on to approve minimal funding for education. This measure says that you wouldn't have to have that minimum guarantee. As a result, it would cut school funding by over $4 billion every year, $600 for every student. It would lead to more overcrowded classrooms, teacher layoffs, and fewer textbooks. It would devastate our public schools. In fact, did you know that we would end up being behind West Virginia and Kentucky in per pupil spending? Now, our schools lost $2 billion when Governor Schwarzenegger, what he does is propose a budget, and then that budget comes to us 
the legislature, and we go back and forth, and the result is a compromise. Well, Proposition 76, he's tried to cut, he's proposed to cut the California Food Assistance Program, which, which provides food for low-income immigrant families. He's proposed to cut for our immigrants. We have a special program for immigrants that is in the state. He wants to cut that. Now, was he able to make these cuts? No, because we, the legislature, said, no, you can't do that. You cannot cut our Asian Pacific Islander community services. But if Proposition 76 passed, there would be nobody to say no to him. So it is clear that Schwarzenegger is terrenia. It's a disease where they think that no matter what this movie star says, it is true. Well, we need to wake the people up. No more schizophrenia, and we need to tell them that they have to vote no. So, I am Bang Musemusta. The Noinapa de Sanon, Parsi Bise, the Nishimim Konjamida. So, I am Yibun Sungue, Tache Hiruja Nikimida. Venya, yes, I need Pujoka the Hamsena Marti. If Makan Donor Tiriga. Good afternoon, my name is Min Sung Park from Parkview Senior Housing. I am 82 years old and I am an American citizen. I am very skeptical about the decision to vote for our decision. I am a special decision in the law of the Barian 76. I will vote no on Proposition 76 since Lara is trying to cut social service program for seniors to solve the budget problem. Gentlemen, time in house ourselves and to eat. This should be our right to live free from such worries, which is why we ask you to vote no on Proposition 76. I want to have the true governor that who really knows how to serve the people. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Park. Now, before we open it up, I've seen gains in their electoral representation. They've been able to elect representatives to all levels of government. Prop 77 puts all these gains at risk, and that is why uh, we urge voters to vote no on Prop 77. I'd be happy to talk with people further, further afterwards. And Cindy, did you want to include Monte Park, Alhambra, San Gabriel, and Rosemead in one district? Before, in all the previous decades, uh, they were all split apart. So we could never get an Asian elected to an assembly position very easily. Um, but it only makes sense, like for instance in our area, where you see a very strong concentration of the Asian Pacific Islander population to be together so that we can vote on the representative of our choice. Well, what this proposition would do is to get three retired judges to draw the lines all by themselves. The process would be very, very closed. And in fact, 
it is so ridiculous that it wants to get these judges to draw these lines almost overnight so that it would be for the 06 election. What kind of public process is that? Um, it's not any public process whatsoever. And what we think, we've actually done, in the legislature, we've actually done uh, some um, analysis of potential lines that could be drawn according to their criteria. And you could see <coughs> all of these districts that we've drawn that have been more Asian friendly just all disappear. That's what would happen if Prop 77 passed. So we cannot have that happen. And then let me say something about Prop 73 because I am actually the co-chair of this proposition, uh, the effort against this proposition, of course. And that is that um, the thing is we would like to have every young woman have great communication with her parents. But we know that by altering decision, but for those young women, and we know those young women who can't talk to their parents for whatever reason, it's essential that we offer confidential services so that they get the support that they need. I work directly with high school girls, and they've told me themselves that if they were forced to tell their parents, other than going to perhaps an aunt or an older sister or a cousin, that they would wait to the very last minute. And we know what, what will happen if they wait or delay um, services and get the counseling that they need. So regardless of your views on abortion, and it's a very personal and sensitive issue, we want all of our daughters, nieces, cousins to be safe, and that's the most important thing. So please vote no. Um, tell your friends to vote no. It's important to, to save young women's lives. The state infrastructure, there were some good points, but in essence it was throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Waste of taxpayer dollars. This special election in November, all the time and energy, uh, labor and